and welcome. This is going to be the first video in my Z Modeler 3 tutorial series. Um, what I'm going to be going over in this one is just the basic interface, uh, how to use it, same type of thing that I did with 3ds Max. Um, I'm not going to really go over any of the tools just yet, just want to kind of go over the basic layout of it, how it works, stuff like that. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm just going to start with this top row up here. So your first button's up here, and mind you, when you open up ZModeler, it looks kind of scary. It's kind of the same thing with 3DS. It's a new program. You don't know how to use it. It looks a little scary. It's not that hard to um, to figure out. It's not that hard to learn. Um, I wouldn't have bothered making this video series just because there's a plenty of people that already have. Um, but I tend to explain things in kind of a different way um, than most people. I learn kind of differently, I explain things kind of differently, and I have to have videos in order for me to really grasp and understand something like some other people might. So I figured, might as well. I'm doing 3ds Max, might as well do Zmod. Um, I've been using the program for probably about two years. Not a professional with it. I don't know everything um, that goes into it. You know, I don't know what all the buttons do. But I do know what all the buttons do when you're trying to make, say, a car in GTA or something. As for, say, 3D modeling and Zmod like some people can, or some other things, I can't do that, and I won't be able to go over that. Um, but anyways, let's begin with the toolbar up top. So you have your file button here. When you click on it, it brings you down to this list, which is New, Open, Save, Save As, Merge, Import, Export, Recent File, and Exit. The New button, of course, makes a new file, Open, will open any .z3d files that you have. Save will save the current scene. Now I don't have anything open right now so I can't save but if you did have something open you're working on a project you can press save it'll save it. Um, but Zmodder 3 does have a good auto save uh, feature and I believe it auto saves in increments of every 15 minutes which can be adjusted in the settings. Um, but if you ever you know think something's about to happen or something's kind of being weird Go up top, hit the file button, save it right quick. Because auto save, you know, if it just auto saved and you've been working for maybe five, six, seven minutes and then it crashes, you lose all that progress you had right there. So if anything ever starts acting funny, ever starts acting weird, I would highly suggest pressing that save button or even pressing save as and making a totally new save. Say your file name is named uh, peanut butter. Make a save as, click the save as button and name it peanut butter with a one next to it, of course, for duplicate, so you don't have a duplicate save. So then you have two separate ones, just in case anything kind of weird happens. Um, next button, of course, being save as, which I just went over. Merge. The merge button um, will merge any .z3d file into your scene that you have open already. So let's just say you open up a scene and you're working on a car, and then you want to pull in a push bar for example. Um, and all these examples, of course, are for GTA. And this program uh, you can use for different games. I know like Mafia, um, I think Real Racing or something like that. There's just a handful of programs that it uses. So this really pertains to just the GTA side of it, which it is most used for. Um, but anyways, so let's just say you're working on a car. You've been working on it for a little bit. You're doing whatever with it. And you want to pull in a push bar. And your push bar is in a .z3d format which is, the, of course, the ZModeler file format. In order to pull that into your scene, you use the Merge button. You click Merge, you find your file, and you click on it, Open, and it merges it into the scene. Now, I will go ahead and warn whoever. Doing this a lot, like say you merge in a push bar, then you merge in a light bar, then you merge in uh, a bunch of interior parts, and you merge in some lights for your rear, then you merge in, you know, um, cups and props and stuff. When you start merging in a lot of stuff, especially at the same time, normally ZModeler will crash. So I, again, I would highly recommend when you merge something, save. Merge something else, save. Merge something else, save. And so on and so forth. And again, even create new saves if you want. Because of course, the program is very prone to crashing a lot. One wrong move, it crashes. You, you use the undo button too much, it crashes. You try and import something and it's something's off about it, it crashes. You even try and open a file sometimes, 
it crashes. Okay. So I think I get the point across. The program is highly prone to crashing, and I would really, again, recommend saving as often as possible. Even having autosave, autosave every five minutes or ten minutes, whatever, rather than every 15 to 20. Me personally, I have it set as every 30 minutes because, again, I take those extra precautions when I do make anything and I save very frequently. Um, but moving on, next button you have is the import button. The import button can be used to import anything that is not the .z3d file, which is a 3D object. That can be a .obj, which is an object file, which I would export as out of 3ds Max, or a .dae file, which is a I forget how you pronounce it, call a data, call a data, something file, whatever the thing is, uh, .3ds file, which actually is not from 3ds, it's from another uh, program. Um, I believe it's Maya or something like that. It's its own kind of thing. It's kind of weird. It's kind of always hard to explain .3ds. .3ds never really works though. When importing, it normally scatters everything around and it's not where it should be. Uh, there's a couple other options. I'm not, of course, going to click any of these things um, and go through everything but uh, just going to explain it very thoroughly and the next one is your export button and your export button of course exports your anything in your scene um, you use this when you want to export a vehicle for OBJ or for OBJ for GTA as say YFT um, or even if you're doing uh, any sort of props or character rigging or whatever like that they have their own separate uh, dot Y I forget what the last two are um, file types and you can also export as an OBJ or your standard things that you also use to import files as. Your next button is your recent files um, and this of course just gives you four and you can even change this in your settings but stock this gives you one two three and four different recent files that you have used um, that you can uh, open back up just right on the fly. And then your last button is exit and that's just exits the whole entire program. Um, I believe. I'm not sure. I've never really used it. And next we have the view drop down. This gives you toolbars, floaters, status bar, layout, material browser, redraw all, and textures browser. Starting back at the top, the toolbars, the toolbars bar gives you a couple of different options. This gives you main toolbar and all this other stuff. Uh, basically all this does is tick like say scene nodes browser, uh, which actually isn't in here, it's in floaters, yes it is, it's in floaters. You basically use this to tick into your little toolbars here. Um, there's stock, there's an animation bar at the bottom here, which I would recommend getting rid of. Um, because the modeler is so prone to crashing and it takes, a lot of the times the auto saves take a while to load and save, same thing when opening or saving a file, it only takes a while. This is it will be down here stock so you'll have I believe it's if I can get it to go down here stock this will be at the bottom uh, not in that same position but I think a little bit over somewhere in that area and then the animation ruler will be next to it down here and it'll be like that this will be all the way over here to the left and this will be running across here for whatever reason um, everyone always says to get rid of these two uh, because if you're just making vehicles, you don't need this. Now, if if you are doing any sort of character rigging or anything like that, anything that involves animation, you do have to have it for that. But if you're just making cars and you don't have to animate anything, get rid of it. You can either take it and drag it, which won't let me do it right there. You can either take it out of there and drag it and just X, or you can, of course, go back up to your views, toolbars, and just untick it. Um, then next, let's see, next is axis mode, primitives, editing levels, snapping, and toolbox. Here you have the axis mode box, which when you took it, it gets rid, wait a minute, just lost it. I actually have no idea what it does. Oh, this little thing right here. Okay, my bad. Um, <laughs> it's this little box right here. Um, basically, this isn't something you ever want to get rid of. 
when you untick it, it gets rid of this little bar right here. And this, the axes basically control how you're moving something, how you're rotating it, uh, etc. You use this, you can click it, tick it, etc. Get rid of it. Click all, click all two of the X and Y. And just click the Z. Uh, whatever you kind of need. You can also use the same thing down here in your actual boxes. And this kind of has a bigger and a little a little better of a constra uh, constraint than using this box up here does. Because this will make it move camera relative. So say if you're in user and you go to move something on the Y, it's going to move it kind of oddly or even say X, it's not going to move it exactly left and right, it's going to move it however this is. If you move it, well, let me explain it a little bit better. More simply, it's going to move it camera relative, so whenever you have the camera facing is which way it's going to move it, um, whereas using this will stop it um, from moving in that such manner and will literally move across the grid points here, rather than, of course, being camera relative to what you're doing and how you're using it. And the next one would be primitives. Uh, primitives are the little box over here and just unticked. Um, primitives are basically just your standard shapes you can make. So you've got a uh, capsule, cap, capsule, capsule, how, capsule, cone, uh, box, cylinder, your dummies, sphere, torus, and tube. It's just very basic kind of stuff you can create. Uh, next one being editing levels. That's going to be this box that runs across here. And this is going to be your vertex, edge, polygon, and object um, levels you can use. Manipulator, I've never really used it. I'm not quite sure how to use it. Um, but as the little picture here, if you can see it, it places a little red box around it and you can kind of move it based around that rather than moving things say in vertex mode and doing it the hard way I believe um, next one is snapping and toolbox snapping is um, basically kind of the same thing that the 3ds does with the snapping feature to snap into grid points uh, snap to vertices snap to edges uh, snap the spline points and snap to grid but that's normally not ever on here. Most people don't use it. Some people do if they do 3D model and Z modeler, which is extremely hard, but can be done. Um, but I normally don't ever use it. Some people will, some people won't. You know, it's according to what, whatever you need. Um, the next one is your toolbox. And your toolbox is literally just a damn undo button, I think. Oh, no, it's not. It's actually this big ass thing. Oops. Um, which is your undo button, redo button, move, rotate, scale, mirror, attach, knife, insert, extrude, detach, separated element, vertical and horizontal buttons. Basically all these are kind of like quick little um, tools that you can use on the fly rather than having to go throughout this menu. This is kind of the most used stuff, which in all honesty, when making vehicles, especially for GTA, you wouldn't really ever use most of this stuff except for, say, element, which is a select, and separated, which is also a select. As for, I mean, well, you do use detach as well, but as for extrude, insert, and knife, that's, again, more so for modeling and having to cut vertices and stuff like that. Um, so you don't really use these three, at least. As for the other ones you do, and for the vertical and horizontal, it just kind of lines up your vertex points. Um, under X and your Y axes, same thing that 3DS does when you make something planar on an axis. Ah, sorry about that, I had to sneeze. <coughs> um, but some people will take this and they'll drag it, say over here to the, ooh, hello. They'll drag it to the left. Um, of course, that didn't really work out that well for me. Um, but they'll take it and drag it to the left so they'll have a big toolbar that runs up and down here. They'll have the bars up here and they'll have their scene nodes over here. Uh, moving on. That's it on the toolbars uh, view button. Next you have floaters. This is your commands bar, messaging bar, and scene notes browser. Your messaging bar is 
this right down here which gives you any sort of error messages or anything that's important down here or it'll give you also the status on an export and import stuff like that um, something you really ever have to pay attention to until you go to export the vehicle it'll tell you if you're missing textures or if something's not assigned properly stuff like that your commands bar is this toolbar over here um, this has all your different options in it like create which will allow you to make a copy of something you can create lights which you do not use for GTA mind you so you kind of can drop this down if you'd like so you don't ever touch it um, or leave it I normally just leave all this stuff as it is uh, there's your light toolbar box and there's your polygon box which the fan single and strip allow you to create polys on already pre-made objects um, so say if you have a hole in something you can use fan or something and you can fill it back in um, spline I've never really used this um, so I can't really speak too much on it uh, as well as surface surface I've never really touched uh, so I, again don't really know what all this stuff do does but they do give you little descriptions here um, on how to make whatever it is you're looking at or how to use it uh, next you have display <coughs> basically the display tab the main buttons you're ever going to use is the center local axis to object and copy local axes from one node to another so let's reset to parent, reset to world. You really only ever use this stuff here. Um, this you can use to hide any sort of objects, polygons, etc. Um, enable will allow you to unhide them, basically. And disable uh, basically freezes. Actually, no. Let me let me go back on that. Enable allows you to enable any object you have disabled, which basically freezes an object so you can't touch it, can't edit it, etc. So then you use the enable button, click on it, and it would allow you to use it again. Your hide button works as one button. You click on it, and use it, and you click on whatever you want to hide, and then you use it and click on whatever again. Uh, I believe down in here in this, this, this box, I don't use it. I've never used it, but I believe that's how it works. Um, but yeah, you would hide whatever object you want and unhide it using the same button. So next you have your local axes, uh, of course, that I just went over. Um, send a local axis to object will basically send your axes or your pivot uh, it's kind of the same thing it's like a little gizmo uh, they don't call it a gizmo in Zmod um, but it's kind of the same thing it has your X Y Z it looks kind of like this except it's on your objects and to show you exactly what I mean here I'm gonna make a box right quick just something basic um, so it's this thing, this little thing you see right here. So if you were to grab this on display, click it, and then click on your object, and you could do this in any viewport, it doesn't matter. You click it, it will center it to whatever object you have. Um, it'll center your little gizmo there for you. Um, and the same thing works when you copy local axes from one node to another. It will basically, if you have multiple things, um, mind you, I haven't used Zmod in probably six to eight months, so I can't quite remember. Um, but if I am not mistaken, when you use this, um, it will set up the same axis point from whatever object you're copying to the other object. So if you have this axis point, say, put or you have it placed, say, you know right here or it's set up right here whatever say it's like right in this area or something I believe that's how that works it will just take it and copy it to whatever other object you have now I'm not 100% sure I may be wrong someone correct me if I am wrong because um, I don't ever use this the only time you I think you have to ever use this is when you're setting up non ELS lights which I do not do um, so I'm not quite sure uh, reset to parent and reset to world uh, how these two works, how, how these two work is kind of simple. When you use reset to world, it will literally reset it to your world wherever your pivot point is, which is this little purple thing right here. You can use this. You can um, if you, you can move it around, do whatever you want to with it. You can take it and move it over here. You, know, you can take it and move it up here, whatever you want to. This is kind of how your camera um, and how a lot of your things will rotate around, especially your rotations. 
everything you rotate will be around this pivot point unless you uh, have it stated otherwise in your uh, rotation properties or move properties or whatever else you're using. Um, but if you ever move this and you need it to go back to where it starts at, which is considered the world pivot, quote unquote, you just go to the little pivot tab here and then reset to origin and it puts it back where it is. Um, but anyways, when you do reset to world, it will reset your pivot point to that pivot there, reset it to zero, 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 basically. And when you reset the parent, which you can't do it when you have just one single object, but if you have multiple, so let me do modify, actually no, create, copy. I will copy this and I'll just move it over a little bit. If you take an object here in your display and reset to parent. Now, the way this works is you have to have objects here in your right menu here placed in a drop down box like so. So this box here is under this box. This box on top is considered your parent. Now, to emphasize what's up and how this is going to work, I'm going to center this one to the object, okay? I'm going to move it, move it up just a little bit, kind of move it around a little bit, just to kind of show you. And how you pan like I just did, you use the middle mouse button. So you hold the middle mouse button and you can move around. And to move around in your user perspective here, or perspective mode, 3D you just click and drag. You don't have to use uh, this, but when you're in user or perspective, you press the alt key and your uh, left mouse button and move around. So it's a little one extra step to be able to move around in here. But anyway, so working here, so your box right here is going to be your parent. This is your parent um, gizmo. I always call them gizmos. Again, they're not called gizmos in Zmod, but I'm going to call them gizmos because that's what I'm used to. This is your parent box and this is your parent gizmo or your uh, axi. This box here is your child, is what it's called. You have your parent, you have your child. Anything placed in the drop down box is considered children uh, in here. And of course, again, the top one is considered your parent. So when you do reset to parent and you click, let me make sure I'm doing the right one, and you click this one, it will reset that gizmo or axi back to wherever the parent is located. And you just saw it, it does kind of make just a little bit of an animation, it kind of like moves kind of quickly. Um, and it'll sprout up and then go back down. But that's kind of how those two work. Um, next is show, and it basically unhides, gives you a description here as well. It unhides any vertices, polygons, um, and you click this button to show previously hidden vertices or polygons, um, which is actually how to show for this. So I was wrong on the hide thing. Again, I don't use half of this stuff, so I'm not 100% sure. But that's actually how that works and this would actually make a lot more sense if this was next to this but they're on the opposite side and I can't get it to move oh well uh, anyways so whenever you hide something you use the show button to pull it back up my mistake so you you, you hide whatever object polygons etc and then you use the show button to pull it back up it does not work in the same button that's my bad um, and then by name uh, basically allows it'll pull this box up and you can hide objects based on this little drop down box here and you can hide them enable them disable them or show it's the same buttons here disable enable hide and show you can click this and disable and it will basically allow you to not even touch it you can use it to enable oh, wait a minute where'd it go cancel there we go and it pulls it back up um, so yeah, these tools are kind of weird. I don't really like them. Again, I don't use them. Never have. Probably never will. But there's just a quick little description of what it does and stuff. Um, and moving on. Uh, we were not... Well, I didn't go over the edit bar. I'll go back to that later. Uh, moving on, we went over the Create tab. Uh, I believe, yes, I went over the display tab. Next up we have modify. I don't know why I'm skipping around. I did that with 3DS as well. I skipped that one middle toolbar and had to do that in a separate video. But I'll go back to these couple options here and this whole stuff up here. 
Um, I basically just skipped one, two, and three right here. No big deal. Anyway, so to the Modify tab. Uh, the Modify tab gives you a lot of options, and this is going to be your most used tab here uh, when you're using ZModeler. This allows... So let me restart. It's going to be your most used tab in ZModeler. To start, you have the Attach button, your Break button, Delete, Flip, Insert, Mirror, Move, Rotate, Scale, and then you have a Sub Mesh box here, which allows you to uh, chant for edges, clean up mesh, converts triangles to quad based mesh, detach any sort of polys, extrude polygons, uh, slice the mesh, optimizes, uh, slices, uh, I don't fucking know, I've never used that button, and your weld button. Now, to start for attach, basically what attach does is it just attaches one object to another, literally it says it there. Uh, you basically click on an object you want to attach and you attach it to that one. Well, you can't do that of course because you cannot attach parent to child. You have to attach child to parent. So you got to be kind of aware of what you're attaching to. Um, I'm just going to undo that so I've got both of these. But yes, you cannot attach a parent to a child. I'm not quite sure why. It's just objects in the scene, but that's just the way it works. Um, it's real simple, straightforward. You attach things together. Uh, break allows you to break vertices. Uh, so you would be in vertex mode and let's just say you want to break and uh, to make this a little bit easier do it in user mode let's just say you want to break this uh, corner right here for whatever reason you would select it click the break button click it and it will literally break I think I've done it I don't know maybe so yes I've broken it three times on accident anyway um, it doesn't break it more than more than just once then you would unclick out of it, then go to your move tool, and I'm gonna constrain it. I'm gonna constrain it on the Z, right quick, and you would just kind of click, and you'd be able to pull it out. Click and pull it out back and forth. This is your top one, of course, and this one is gonna be your thing. It'll basically just break it all up for whatever you need that for. Um, you don't really use this too much, but you can if you're ever again doing any sort of modeling or whatever it might be. Um, but again, it's just a little button that's not really used too much, but there's just the basic use of it. And next you have the delete button, which of course you can just use the delete key. I would not really recommend going to delete and literally clicking on an object to delete it. You can literally select it and then just press the delete key and it gets, gets rid of it. Uh, flip allows you to flip an object. So anytime you have an object that looks like this, for example, um, say you're in 3ds and you've made something and it literally looks like it's flipped inside out that happens sometimes especially when you attach things together you go to the flip tool click it it flips it back to the way it should be um, insert allows you it's kind of like uh, swift loop in 3ds um, it allows you just basically insert a line of edge points or vertices in an object now again I don't use any of these tools any of these uh, polygon type like modeling tools and Zmod because of course I do everything in 3ds but that's just the basic simple use of it uh, mirror allows you to literally mirror objects across whatever axis you have selected so let's just say I wanted to mirror something across the x-axis here I want to say mirror this click it wait a minute that's not working the way I wanted it to Oh wait, because I don't even have the damn tool selected. So, mirror it across the Y. Now, I don't have a copy of it, so it didn't necessarily work out. But basically, it just mirrors something across the axis. So it'll mirror something, say, on the across the Y, X, or Z axis. Um, so yeah, but that's not exactly working. Most time, you have to have a copy of it. But you get the basic functionality, uh, functionality, functionality of it. Um, and then next, you have your move tool, which you, of course you're going to use probably the most out of everything here to move stuff around um, and place it. It literally does exactly what it says. It moves stuff around back and forth. Um, very simple, straightforward, to the point. Rotate, of course, rotates objects. You rotate it, you know, back and forth, whatever you want to do. You can rotate it very slowly. 
you can also click and very precisely type in something however much of a value you want to rotate with say 10 degrees it rotates at 10 degrees or negative 10 it rotates at negative 10 you know very straightforward to the point and then you have scale which literally scales an object you scale it back and forth now I only have the Z selected uh, the Z actually selected for this so it's only scaling it left and right basically but you can use it you know to rotate or not rotate but to scale something on all axes if I can get it here rotate it down whatever you want to do uh, Z rotates it you know just like so um, X again just like so etc and you can also use um, again same thing with the rotate tool you can click and you can kind of set on your own little values here you can also do all axes tick that and it will literally scale it down on all axes makes it 50 percent smaller uh, continuing on you have your sub mesh group here um, none of this stuff I ever use but a lot of it gives you descriptions on what it <coughs> gives you descriptions on what they all do I'm not really going to go over them too much because you don't ever use a lot of them uh, except for detach and sometimes weld uh, optimize I would never touch it don't ever touch that button don't ask questions do not touch it okay period don't touch it don't use it don't ever touch it um, the reason I say this is because when you're making LODs, most people use this button to very easily make LODs and it does not come out very good. It looks like you stuck it through a paper shredder and then uh, the monster from Monsters Inc. chewed up on it a little bit and spit it back out. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look uniform. It doesn't. None of that. Uh, so never, ever, 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 ever use that button. Ever. 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 Ever ever continuing on um, your weld button of course welds your vertices so if you say break vertices like what I showed and you want to weld two of them together and then use the third one to do whatever with you just grab those two vertices and you select them and you use the weld tool and you weld it simple straightforward to the point uh, rigging I've never ever used any of this stuff I will not go over this I can't go over it I don't know what any of this shit does continue on select select gives you a bunch of different ways you can select objects or vertices um, I'm not really going to go over all of them but the main ones you'll use are element separated and quad R and sometimes single um, all of course selects everything and this normally works say on polygon mode or whatever element will select everything that is connected together uh, kind of like if you press if you're in 3ds and you click on one poly and then you use the grow tool except this will this will select everything all at once rather than you literally clicking a button and it's slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it selects everything invert of course selects the opposite um, again not going to go over all of this none of course deselects everything um, open edges allows you to select anything that is not a not connected to the main object anything that's kind of like separated uh, I believe polylines kind of like a lasso tool uh, quad R is the basic standard thing you normally use and this you don't ever really have to have selected as you can see I can click and drag and select stuff without having to have quad R on and by doing so you just click this little button right here that says auto if you have it deselected of course you can't use that but when you have it on you can click and drag. I don't ever use this this quad R tool. Uh, separated, um, kind of the same thing. It's grab stuff. It's not together in one chain. Uh, single selects single objects. ID selects objects by ID value. Uh, by material selects it by material, and by name of course selects it by name. Uh, continuing on surface. Now for this you're going to use. Uh, probably very rarely honestly unless you have like have to UV map but in order to UV map you honestly just right click mapping edit UV rather than going to this little menu here and doing all that other extra stuff um, but you uh, to go over them really really fast uh, copy of course as it displays gives you a little description here 
It'll copy the UV mapping from one object onto another if they match on vertice count. Edit UV, of course, is to edit your UV mapping. And I'll go over and make a whole video on UV mapping later. Um, reset UV mapping basically resets it to a gray box or gray object, whatever. It gets rid of all the mapping on it, period. For normals, this allows you to calculate normals, uh, unify normals. Uh, basically allows you to calculate this pivot uh, project normals out of out from pivot helper point allows you to basically calculate normals to the world which again this is your pivot point right here it allows you to calculate normals based on where that's placed at which can be useful sometimes but not a whole lot uh, smooth of course smooths everything out um, you can kind of edit this and play with it some and according like you know change the values and stuff so if I wanted to smooth this box here I'd click let's press no, it's not gonna work Take your effect, let's say bring it 300. And your angle, let's make it 100, I don't know. This should work, I don't fucking know, I never smooth stuff, yep, there we go. You know, boom, it smooths an object, it's all in the same smoothing group, smoothing modifier. I don't ever really use that though. I normally smooth everything in 3DS, so one of those things, again, I can't really go over a whole lot. Um. Continuing on, I'm going to go back up to this, these three here that I missed out on. So edit, it's very simple. Uh, edit, you have surface, normals tuner, and UV remapper. I've never touched any of these two buttons here, so I have no idea how they work, how to use them, etc. Um, but undo and redo are just basic, simple buttons in a different area location. This is right here and right here. And undo browser is this button right here next to this. Um, so kind of useless, but you know it is what it is. Settings. Settings, of course, brings up your settings menu. And if pull that over, I'll show you. You have a lot of different settings here. Um, and I may go over the settings in a different video as well because there's a lot of stuff you can play with in here, but very basic. Um, simple stuff. It will show you just general stuff like your viewports. Uh, your meshes, you know, colors and stuff. You can change colors. You can choose to show normals, uh, the brightness of stuff, etc. Uh, tool tips, if they're on or off, etc. It's a bunch of little things. Uh, colors again, you know, change how your interface looks. Rendering device just kind of shows you your basic rendering properties. Gives you your graphics card. Um, you can change little things in here. Plugins allows you to put in plugins. I don't think there's any plugins for Z Modeler, as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't know of anyone that's made any, but they can be used. Profile gives you options of the profile. I believe it displays your profile info, which I'm not going to select. But that's just a general kind of thing. It basically gives you a lot of different options for settings and stuff, things you can change, look at, etc. Uh, next, you have your About, which displays program info. You have product information, license information, and account setup. And product info just gives you literally product info on Zmod, you know, what version it is, what build, etc., when it was created, so on and so forth, all this other extra stuff, which I don't even know. This looks like a bunch of gibberish to me. But anyway, uh, next tab you have license information. I'm not going to click in license information because it literally gives you your license product key. Um, and of course, if you have any sort of anybody's license info, you can use it, you know, to do whatever with you can really take it claim it as your own and use it so I'm not going to do that um, account setup will allow you to log in to your Zmod account and it will let you if you have it enabled on the site will allow it to literally sync up online and verify your license itself because with Zmod you have to verify your license for it every seven days and that I can go over as well in a separate video if need be or if anyone needs any help with that so get out of that. That covers those last three there. Um, moving on, what's left? Um, I've already went over all this stuff over here. I've already went over all the buttons here. Let's go over here to the scene notes browser. So the first option you have here is your hierarchy. Um, you also have your hierarchy down here. But if the, using the hierarchy button, it basically just gets rid of all this extra stuff over here, like your LODs, your dust, dirt, etc., states, compounds, stuff like that. So it literally just displays everything you have in the scene object-wise. And dummies as well. Um, 
structure is the main tab you'll hardly ever get out of this unless you have to assign ID states to stuff or change vertices like how vertices look stuff like that um, but structure allows you to look at your LODs different LODs your LO L1 L2 L3 and L4 your collisions your dust your dirt uh, burn states scratch states damage and motion which damage I think you don't ever use as well as motion unless you're doing any sort of uh, animation with um, characters weapons stuff like that um, states I don't I don't know never used it and um, converting stuff to compound this is basically how you do LODs you take an object say your box right here with all this stuff unticked you press convert to compound and makes this your default and then you tick LO which you had to lock your thing here first so you lock it then grab then go to LO grab your box here boom it's your LO now you know simple that's not really how that's supposed to work but anyway um, that's not how you do that but you know it is what it is it's very simple simple tutorial gives you the idea at least of what the stuff does um, but that kinda covers that uh, properties of course gives you property values um, of whatever you have selected and it gives you your naming uh, it gives you boundary boxes your XYZ uh, external states which is your ID which you use IDs for different things in GTA like if it's supposed to react like it's a metal a wood uh, whatever it may be, appearance uh, just kind of changes the color of it in the scene. Wireframe, flat shader, are just options you can tick and untick. Um, transformation, you can modify your position of the box, object, etc., your rotation, and your scaling, which of course you can do over here in your modify tab. But this kind of allows you to do it right here, all in one little box setting here. I've never really, I've never done it this way, but it can be done. You can use it if this is the way you'd like to do things numerically. Uh, mesh gives you your mesh type, which of course is polygonal mesh. Uh, the count vertices, which of course displays your vertice counts here, uh, your polygons. And then with these drop downs here, you have format and it allows you to change what is applied to it, like UV channels. If it's deformable or not, uh, if you have normals, tangents, primary colors, stuff like that. And polygons gives you your triangles, your triangle count if it was converted over to triangles. Your format, which of course it's in quads as it stands, and material, and you can assign and unassign materials in this option, as well as the materials browser, which I'll go over in a separate video. And then user defined options gives you uh, stuff you can kind of edit and change say if it was like a bumper and it had to have a certain weight to it you would set it up in there um, I believe that I believe that, that uh, just about covers everything though um, I don't think I've really missed out on anything uh, went over everything went over this went over the scene nodes uh, all the whole bar up here uh, let me go over the viewport right quick so the viewport like I just did, you can move it around however you wish, move it up and down. Um, it's kind of simple, like. Um, so your first button here. Now I'm going, I'm going to get rid of all these. Just kind of move them over, just for uh, for lack of confusion. All these work exactly the same, which is why I'm doing this this way. So you have when you click on this button you have all the different viewports you can use so you have 3d which is literally your 3d option front viewport which displays things from the front left which of course displays things from the left it's very straightforward uh, easy so I'm going to skip but you have left top back right and bottom then user user is kind of like um, 3d except it displays things um, a little differently how it looks as far as you know uh, flipping around the viewport and perspective will display it from a perspective based standpoint um, it kind of looks a little different of course um, than 3d and user and UV mapper UV mapper gives you your options of course to UV map things and this is where all these other buttons come into play which I don't I'll go over in a separate one on how to UV map and what all this other stuff does 
but that's that. I'm going to flip this back to 3D. And then next running across the line here, you have um, all these different options here. Uh, so firstly, tripod. When you show or hide that, now this is called something different in these views. This is this little box right here. This is considered your tripod. And you can show it or hide it. And you can change the size of it from small, medium to big. Big being that big, medium being like that, small being that. Uh, image allows you to select well, not even select, but uh, display an image on the background that you can use, say, if you 3D model in Zmod, you can use it and display an image, use it to model off of whatever it might be. Um, color allows you to change the color of a couple different things. Um, so you can say, add to custom. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that because that's going to screw up how my view for it looks, but it'll basically allow you to change the background here. Uh, grid allows you to toggle if there's any sort of grid, so literally you just click that, it displays one grid, more grid again, displays a little bit more, and more grid one more time, displays a little, which you can't really see on that well, but little tiny boxes, little more, more grid points in these bigger boxes here. Um, less grid, of course, gets rid of those, and less grid again gets rid of those, and then leaves that one, and then less grid one more time gets rid of all of them together. Pivot, of course, I've already went over. That's your little pivot point right here. Move it around. You know, you can stick it up here and use pivot. Reset to origin to get rid of it. And then pivot and place under cursor literally puts it up under your cursor. It won't really work that well in 3D mode, but if you're saying left, you can pivot, place under cursor. It places it right here at the very top. And you can kind of do whatever if you have something up here. Um, I'll reset it to origin. Now moving over to the right. You have all these different options here. You have wireframe, outline, solid, flat shaded, bones and skeleton, rig transform, weight paint, mesh deform, texture, semi-transparent, animation, and light. And literally what this does is it toggles what you can or cannot see in your view here. So if I take on wireframe, it's going to show me the wireframe of an object. If I take on outline, it's going to show me the outline of it. And this being just boxes, it doesn't change, but it will if you have a more complex shape. It'll literally just show the outline. It won't give you the actual mesh or wireframe on the inside. I take that, and then solid allows you, if you tick it and untick it, it literally gets rid of any solid objects in the scene. And then using flat shaded, it will shade everything. Um, a certain way but this of course being boxes can't really tell a difference bone skeleton rig transform and weight paint as well as mesh deform are all well actually one two and three right well actually no bones and skeleton and rig transform are all according to your character mapping weight paint and mesh deform is whenever you are applying um, vertice paint to objects and you have it on or off and you want to see how it looks etc mesh deform Textures, of course, being your textures, which, again, I don't have any textures in the thing loaded up, so that's not really going to make a difference. Um, but you could, of course, ugh, excuse me, take and untick any of these options here. Um, Semi-transparent makes everything semi-transparent, as it literally says. Um, then animation allows you to tick or untick if you want to see animation or not, and then light gets rid of the light in the scene. Um, so it looks like that with light or without light and it looks like that with light um, so that covers that and then the zoom you use the you use the mouse wheel to zoom you don't want to use this same thing with pan uh, pan you use the middle mouse button rather than clicking this and dragging everywhere uh, and then fit will fit to the screen according to where your little thingy is your little pivot gizmo which you can't see it right now but it's like right in the middle of these two it will fit it exactly kind of towards the middle, wherever that's at. Um, and then this allows you to make something bigger. So let me go back out here. So if I click this little button, it basically maximizes how big that is and minimizes it. Um, so that covers that. I believe that's about it. Um, oh, no. Actually, one more thing. A couple more things, actually. Um, so if you have an object selected, or even if you grab it in here, you use the isolated key and you can isolate that object 
by itself and you untick the ISO of the key and it brings everything back in. Show all brings everything up if you have stuff hidden and hide all of course hides everything. Uh, move up will literally allow you to move something up and move down. Move allows you to move something down. Relink up uh, moves an object one level up in the hierarchy. Um, never really used it so I'm not quite sure exactly what it does but it you know, gives you a description. Uh, expand and collapse. So if you have the parent selected of a collapsible box there, collapse will allow you to collapse it and expand of course allows you to expand it. But you have little boxes right here you can use so no real use for that. Um, but on that note I have now covered everything just the basic you know, interface and how a few things work. Um, so I think that's it. Um, but as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.